Okay. Another great and interesting question, or actually it's a curious question. I'm curious why that question is being asked. Uh, essentially, uh, it's a generic question. The question is, are there still unions, company unions in the Philippines? When I read that question, I said, OMG. <laughs> the answer is yes, there are still so many unions in the Philippines. Um, I encountered this report from the ILS of the Department of Labor and Employment. ILS is um, Institute of Legal Studies or Labor Studies. It's an attached research office agency, or I don't know what, what it is, but it's connected with the Department of Labor and Employment, which does a lot of research on labor employment. So if you're reading a lot of, or encountered a lot of labor statistics data, like the unemployment rate, uh, and so on and so forth. That's the that's the office that is responsible for doing the research. And then I recall that research. Well, actually, it's it's already two years ago, two year old. But it was a short report. It read that I think if I correct if I if I remember it correctly, there are about four hundred plus or five, around five hundred unions in the Philippines. Okay, and most of these are located in. Um, I think it's in Calabarzon, Laguna, uh, Pampanga. Uh, essentially, areas where you have factories, plants, um, those uh, manufacturing firms. Okay, but do not be misled. Unions are also found in certain um, office-based work, particularly the banks, banks financial institutions and um, large organizations, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, maybe that the one asking question is also not that, um, uh, I would say this, I'm aware that during the 70s and the 80s, the unions in the Philippines were really quite a uh, strong sector. That is the one of the reasons why the labor code was passed. Okay, the labor code was passed in 1972, if I recall it correctly, because it was a response to the clamor for better labor laws and re uh, regulations. Because before the labor code, there was not, there were very few laws, labor laws. Okay, um, it's like your dynasty law bill. The dynasty bill or law will never get passed because um, you have people who are interested in not passing it. The same goes with labor laws. The employers during this time, during this decade, the uh, 60s, 70s, early 80s, the employers were also your um, lawmakers or some of the lawmakers, not all, of course. So... Yeah. There were not a lot, of, a lot of labor laws passed because it, it, it can run contrary to their interest. So um, the labor code was uh, passed to address these um, problems or issues. That's why also when the 1986 constitution was being drafted, it's one of those unique things about the Philippine constitution because you cannot find it in other constitutions in other countries. We have a specific uh, paragraph dedicated to the labor workforce, which becomes the basis for many labor law principles, particularly that very um, important provision on uh, protection for the workers, okay, regardless of where they are, whether they're in the Philippines or outside, then you have security of, uh, let me go back to that protection. It says in the constitution, full protection, okay, that, that adjective full, okay, is very important because there are so many labor cases citing that. And then you have, uh, I mentioned security of tenure, you have your minimum wage, 
minimum living wage, and then so many other labor law principles. Okay, particularly for our purposes right now, the right to self-organization, organization, collective bargaining and negotiation, negotiations, and then the right to strike. Strike, that's the most powerful weapon of a union. Even the Supreme Court has acknowledged it. The right to strike is the most powerful and econo the economic weapon of a union because when you have a strike, it totally shuts down the workforce, the manufacturing firms, the plants, the production plants, and so on and so forth. And then you don't have any productivity, no output. It will uh, affect the bottom line, the business, the sales of the employer. So to go back to our question, I have encountered a lot of unions because I represented a lot of companies that had company unions or these were companies <clears throat> that we call as organized establishments. So um, I usually um, attend mediation hearings or preventive mediation hearings before the National, Con National Conciliation and Mediation Board, NCMB, wherein um, I represent the employer and then on the other side of the table, you have around five to seven, sometimes 10 union officers who will try to intimidate me. <laughs> uh, just kidding. There are a lot of union officers who are very friendly, nice, uh, professional. And of course, there are the bad eggs, <laughs> the really frustrating group where um, there's no point talking to them anymore. Um, so I have, I have a lot of good experiences with good company union officers. So there was this union in Marikina, uh, in Paranaque, Pasay, Bulacan. Bulacan was an interesting case because there was no legitimate union, union yet. They were organizing or they, it was the initial steps to create a union, meaning they had to vote whether they wanted to have a union or not. So uh, I came in, we came in to oversee whether everything was being conducted correctly. When we say oversee, employers and their representatives, including the lawyers, are not allowed to interfere. You're just a bystander, you just watch if things are being followed because there are rules on how to create or organize a union. You have to follow them. And then if you don't follow these um, requirements, that's the time that the employer can question the validity of the election, the validity of the process. Like for instance, um, do you count the votes of employees who have expressed support but did not show up during the election day for many reasons, okay? And all of those other technical grounds. Um, however, if the there is no violation, by the way, during this organization, organization process, there is a representative from the Department of Labor and Employment via the, uh, what's it called this office or agency? Yeah, um, there's this particular unit, DOLE, that uh, uh, oversees the, the organization of unions. I'll, maybe I'll recall it later. So um, that officer will be the one assisting the union and making sure that they comply to avoid any te technicalities later on. Uh, so that's, that was one of my experiences in Bulacan. And then there in Pampanga, um, I won't mention uh, names. Uh, in particular, it was the, the height of regularization cases there. So um, when I say regularization cases, that was the time when there was a lot of inspection being conducted and then the Department of Labor and Employment may uh, issued findings declaring that certain workers who were from contractors or subcontractors, the Department of Labor and Employment would declare that they're actually the employees of the principal. So we had to manage all of these uh, labor law cases to refile left and right. And then there was also the uh, unions in Laguna. I'm trying to recall, Calamba. somewhere there, okay. Um, 
I almost I almost visited like five or six municipalities in uh, Laguna. <laughs> That's my first time to have a road trip there um, uh, to sit down and talk. And then I'd say this. Um, what's, what's my notable experience? Well, I attended uh, somewhat a high-profile case in Laguna, and every time before and after the hearing, there are people who are picketing, protesting outside the, the Dole office. And then, of course, since I am the representative, the lawyer for the company, uh, they tend to try to intimidate me, shout all of this script. I would call it a script because it's almost the same thing that they say every time they attend the meeting or the hearing, okay? And then um, during the hearing, this is what I, what I said earlier about the, the bad eggs. Some union officers really, they just follow a script. They don't really, they're not, they have no interest in actually discussing anything. They, they, they come into the uh, conference. The whole purpose of the conference is a medi it's a mediation. We're supposed to explore some uh, possible compromise wherein there would be a win-win solution for both parties, the employer and employees. But sometimes, again, these bad eggs, uh, I keep saying bad eggs, okay? Because again, I've encountered really the good ones, the nice, proper, professional uh, union officers. They're, they're very reasonable to talk to. They, they understand um, what collective bargaining is all about, but there's, there are always this ad, the other side who um, does not even, uh, how to say this, not even open to hearing the side of the company. They just shout, shout, and shout. Remember, this is, the Do this is a Dole office, okay? A Department of Labor and Employment office. If you've been to any other office, you can imagine there's a table, there's, there are chairs, and then there are other tables and chairs of other employee uh, uh, workers of the department. They're also working. Can you just imagine? When you have a hearing conference, you're supposed to be cordial. You're supposed to be courteous. You just talk in an ordinary tone of your voice. But again, these bad eggs, they just keep shouting, shouting, and shouting. It's like um, you, the, maybe you need a do you need a microphone, speakerphone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I try not to agitate them. I just listen to them and then take note of it and then uh, try to relate to the manage management and then. Um, see what will be the response of the employer. To go back to the question and why I think that the one who submitted the question asked that is that because maybe he or she is working in companies or offices and probably he or she has not encountered unions. Hmm. Let me tell you why, and this is my theory, why there are no more unions in other companies or offices is that because job hopping because of job hopping <laughs> most employees um how to say this um don't stay in companies for more than two years okay if you have people who hop left to right in various companies and then some of them after getting some experience go outside of the philippines as ofws because uh, there's better pay it's, it's the the pasture is greener on the other side, as they say, okay? Why is that important? Because to organize or to form a, a union in a company, um, you need union officers. Union officers come from the rank and file. They are not managers. They're also not supervisors. Well, supervisors can form their own uh, union, but they cannot join the rank and file. So you'll have two separate unions, one for the rank and file and one for the supervisors. So the rank and file, uh, these union officers, they, they are usually long-time employees. When I say long-time, the, short, the shortest time there would be around 10 years, 15 years, and some 20 to 30 years. Ask yourself right now, um, can you imagine working in a company for at least 10 years? most office-based worker or knowledge workers will probably say no because the goal or objective always is to look for better compensation, okay? And that's why there's a lot of job hopping. So this 
establishments will never have a union. And then if you are part of the management team, whether you are a managerial employee or uh, managerial staff, you are prohibited by law from forming a union or joining a union. The, the simple reason is very obvious. You are the management. You represent the management. You cannot bargain with yourself. How do you expect negotiating nego, uh, the negotiation will go if on the employee side, it's you, and on the, other, on the employer side, it's also you. You're negotiating or bargaining with yourself. That's not, that's not possible. That's not logical. Okay, So the law, labor law, prohibits managers and even confidential employees, um, how to say this, um, from forming unions. For confidential employees, they're not allowed to form unions because the very nature of their work, they handle confidential information and documents. Can you imagine confidential employees bargaining against the employer? The confidential employee will hostage all of this confidential information and then basically coerce the employer to agree to their terms. The confidential employee can threaten or may threaten the employer that they will divulge all of this sensitive proprietary confidential information if you don't uh, increase our holiday pay or increase our overtime pay and so on and so forth. So that's why the empl confidential employees are also banned or prohibited from forming a union. So there, um, the reason why you're not seeing a lot of unions in other organizations, companies, or offices is that because to form one, you have to be part of a rank and file and your un union officers should be there. Uh, you will, do you want to volunteer to be a union officer? Or can you imagine your colleagues or workmates uh, wanting to be a union officer? <clears throat> A union officer is basically the HR for its members, okay? Meaning if you're a union officer, your members in your union, instead of going to HR to ask for help or assistance to a problem, the union members will approach you as a union officer. You become an HR. <laughs> you become a sudo or extension of HR and you'll be the one who will be relaying all of these um, uh, problems, issues, or concerns to the actual HR, okay? So not a lot of people want that job, okay? I, I say job because it is really a job. It's, an, it's, an, it's a job on top of your job. You have your job as an employee of the company, plus you have a second job as a union officer. That's why um, the problems with union officers is uh, you're almost like a manager, meaning your members can interrupt you, can call you, can text you in the evening, in weekends, and holidays. Okay, that's why nobody wants to be an officer. <laughs> it's it's it, you'll be dealing with people's problems. Okay, of course, for those who are in manufacturing firms or those who are already already have unions, they they know that already. Okay, that's really like um, their service to their uh, members. Okay, and depending on the bylaws of the union, they, they, they get additional pay or some form of remuneration. Okay, so there. So yes, uh, with respect to the question, there are unions in the Philippines. They're mostly found in um, uh, manufacturing plants, uh, facilities and so on and so on. Uh, and then in banks and financial institutions and certain large companies um, because they, they have union officers who are willing to take on the job. Uh, if there are no union officers who will step up to assume the responsibilities, then it's going to be very difficult to organize in a establishment. Okay, so I hope this has been informational. Um, feel free to subscribe for new content or join our memberships. Membership, sorry, for mentoring. See you in the next lesson.